Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by Hyundai. Experience the 2011 Hyundai Sonata today at HyundaiSonata.com. This is AutoLine Daily for the first day of December, and now, the news. The United Auto Workers says it will pick its transplant target by the end of this year and is close to determining who that will be, Bloomberg reports. In the meantime, the brothers and sisters in the UAW are beating the war drums for their brothers and sisters who work for Hyundai in South Korea. They're picketing Hyundai dealerships in the United States in a show of solidarity with Korean union workers who want more money. But the UAW says this picketing effort has nothing to do with its efforts to organize the transplants and that Hyundai is not the target. GM engineers have developed a new treatment for brake rotors that prevents rust and doubles their life expectancy. This can save drivers big bucks over the life of their vehicle. The process is commonly used on powertrain components and is called ferritic nitrocarburizing, or FNC for us non-chemists. It involves a massive oven and lots of heat. Rotors are baked at 560 degrees Celsius. That's about 1,040 degrees Fahrenheit, and they bake it for an entire day. During the process, nitrogen atoms bond with the surface of the steel, making it stronger and less prone to rusting. GM is aiming to have FNC rotors on 80% of its U.S. models by 2016. Renault just released details about its all-new Twingo subcompact car. It's the first vehicle in the company's lineup to show off the new design language developed by VP of Design Lauren Van Acker. Powering the Twingo is a variety of gasoline and diesel engines that improve fuel economy compared to the previous version. A sports model will also be made available, and drivers can customize the Twingo with roof decals, which can be coordinated with the interior and upholstery. The new Twingo goes on sale next year and is available in 48 countries. Well, we've got some more reveals from the Tokyo Auto Show. Audi is showing off a new five-door sportback version of its tiny A1. Beyond a couple of extra openings, this model is also taller than the three-door model, so there's more room for backseat passengers. Six engines will be offered, three gasoline and three diesel. The range-topping power plant should deliver around 185 horsepower. The Audi A1 Sportback is expected to go on sale in Europe early next year. Entry-level pricing should be less than 17,000 euros, and in American dollars, that is about 23 grand. Toyota revealed a hydrogen-powered concept in Tokyo called the FCVR. The fuel cell is located under the body, which helps improve space for both passengers and luggage. Toyota says the FCVR has a range of 700 kilometers, that's about 435 miles, and a production version is scheduled to launch in 2015. Also at the Tokyo Auto Show, Nissan Renault CEO Carlos Ghosn tells the media that global warming is going to convince consumers to buy electric cars. He says that as the public sees a growing number of weather-related disasters, people are going to blame global warming and will turn to electric cars as the solution. Well, Mr. Gowen, I respectfully disagree. I believe that when big storms knock out the electric grid, people are going to recoil in horror as they realize they can't go anywhere in their electric cars. Worse, there's no way they're going to dare take their electric cars onto streets that are partially covered in water for fear of being electrocuted. And when they realize that their electric car might only go 100 miles, as they try to flee a 400-mile-wide hurricane that's bearing down on them, they're going to wonder why they ever bought an electric car. No, Mr. Gowen, I think weather calamities will not encourage people to buy electrics. Hey, why does Mini describe its latest car as a helmet head? We'll show you why right after this. What if we always settled for the first thing that came along? Then we'd never have gotten here. 
Introducing the Sonata Hybrid from Hyundai. Mini continues to expand its lineup of models, and the latest model is called the Coupe. Take a look. Over the last several years, Mini has expanded its lineup. It started with the convertible in 2005, which was followed by the Clubman in 2008, and last year it was the Countryman. Now the company is set to come out with its first two-seater, the Mini Coupe. While there's no mistaking it as a Mini, there are differences. The new Mini Coupe is based on our Mini hardtop. So the overall length and width and floor pan is the same. But underneath, we did use the convertible's rocker sills and lower B-pillars to reinforce it, to make the car as stiff as possible so they can have the best handling characteristics as well. So it's still 97-inch wheelbase, so all the suspension tuning was easy for us for this new body style, but we did put specific suspension tuning for the coupe. It's the first Mini to adopt a three-box body structure which refers to the engine compartment, passenger area, and the trunk. The A-pillar and windshield are more sharply raked, which gives the coupe a sleeker look. And it also features what Mini calls a helmet roof because, well, it looks like a helmet. It's also the first Mini with an active rear spoiler, which extends automatically once you hit 50 miles per hour, and recedes once the speed drops below 37 miles per hour. Even though it's an inch lower than the hardtop, it doesn't impact headroom because the roof features two oval recesses for the driver and passenger. The layout of the interior is similar to the rest of the lineup. Powering the coupe is a variety of 1.6 liter four-cylinder engines. So just like the rest of our Mini Core models, we carry over three versions. The naturally aspirated Cooper with 121 horsepower, the turbocharged Cooper S with 181 horsepower, and then the John Cooper Works model with 208. I might add that the John Cooper Works Coupe is Mini's quickest accelerating ever. It's 6.1 seconds from zero to 60, and it has the fastest top speed, 149 miles an hour for the John Cooper Works Coupe. The engine can be mated to a six-speed manual or automatic transmission. And as you would expect, fuel economy varies depending on which powertrain you get. So how much does the Coupe cost? So, I mentioned we have three versions of the Coupe. The Cooper Coupe starts at $22,000 even. The Cooper S Coupe is $25,300. And the John Cooper Works Coupe is $31,900. And these prices all include the $700 destination and handling fee. The Mini Coupe is available right now. According to Ward's, Mini sales in the American market are up a very impressive 22% so far this year. And while sales of the original Mini Cooper are down somewhat, the other models have more than made up the difference. Hey, be sure to join us for AutoLine After Hours tonight. Join me and the auto extremist Peter DeLorenzo for some of the best insight as to what's going on in the automotive industry. That's tonight, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Time at AutoLine.tv. And that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.